Hi, I am Mandy of Mad Cow Mandy Designs. It is December the 22nd, 2022, and this is Stitch 44. Um, I'm going to call this the Holiday Special. So it is nine o'clock at night. Today is my husband's first day of vacation. It was really, really hard to pry myself away from him so that I could do a little bit of work. Um, but I wanted to talk to y'all. I wanted to tell y'all happy holidays. So because it is nine o'clock at night, I have made myself not coffee. And we're gonna have a little fun tonight. So if you are ready, I have a finished object. It is not yarn, but it is yarn related. It's that time of the year where we are planning out next year. We're thinking about all the great projects that we want to do next year. And there's one project that everybody always talks about every single year. Without fail, I've already heard people talking about, maybe I'll make a temperature blanket this year. Been there, done that. I made mine in 2017. No, I made mine for 2017. Um, it took me four years to finish it. I didn't work on it continuously for four years. <laughs> I, let's see, that was 2017. We were living in Mississippi and I started it. I got about a month in and my wrist hurt so bad. I could not crochet. I could not knit. I could barely do my job. And my boss told me I had to go to the doctor. I had to find out what was wrong. And she thought I had carpal tunnel. Ends up I had arthritis. And it took me until about June, July to officially be diagnosed and start medications for it. And by that point, I hated my blanket. I hated it so much. I was mad at it because it caused the arthritis. It didn't. I know it didn't. I know that's irrational, but I was mad at it nonetheless. So this is my book from 2017 when I made one and I did keep up with all the temperatures, all the colors, and I went back and I finished it. Again, it was four years later, but it's finished and it is on my bed. This photo is actually my finished blanket. I sleep under it every night and I love it. So let's talk about what this is. This is so that you can plan out your blanket and keep track of all the temperatures that you're wanting. And if anything happens and it takes you more than a year, you'll have all your notes. They'll all be in one place. So on your first page, you can fill in what year it's for, uh, what size needle or hook you are using, what pattern you're using, and then any notes you might have. You can keep track of what color yarns you're using and what day, uh, temperature ranges you want to use. Traditionally, there are 10 colors and the colors start with like below zero is a color and then zero to 10, 11 to 20, and they go in increments of 10. I didn't do that. My blanket, I married a very intelligent man and I explained to him that I was worried about making this blanket because it would all be red. Live in the South, it's always hot. The whole thing would be red and I don't like red. He imported all of the previous year's data from Weather Underground, did some fancy math, and came up with custom ranges for myself. Um, which one was it? Look at yellow. Yellow is two degrees. There was a fair amount of yellow in that blanket. Tropical pink was only two degrees, and there was a lot of pink in that blanket. 
I don't know how he did the math, but he did it and it was beautiful. So I am leaving the ranges open for y'all. You can put in whatever range fits your area, whatever color fits your area. And if you want to color in the blocks, you can. I did not go ahead and pre-color them with a rainbow because maybe you don't want to do a rainbow. I had a friend last year, she did these gorgeous like jewel tone colors instead of a rainbow. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So from there, you have all the months and the days are listed down the side with check boxes and it simply says temp. I use the high of every day. Some people like to use the high and the low. Some like to use the average. It's up to you. It's your blanket. Do whatever you want. And then a spot for you to write in the color just so that you can have it there as reference if you like. I liked having it, so uh, four months, four more months, the last four months, and a dot grid for any notes that you might have. And just for funsies, it comes with a bookmark and little holes punched in it so you can hang your yarn from it and put your temperature range on here if you like. I just thought it was a cute idea, so why not? But that will be available in my Etsy shop um, tonight, tomorrow, very soon because you need to be ready come January the 1st, right? So if you want to make a temperature blanket, it's an experience. It is a life experience that you probably will never forget. Uh, even if, you know, you don't have any kind of mega crisis that year, it's a lot of fun. And you remember working on it throughout the year and the thing becomes just this massive project. If you like the colors of my blanket, by the way, um, you can message me. I will gladly tell you what stitch pattern I used. I used a moss stitch pattern. It's not a secret. It's a moss stitch crocheted pattern. Um, and I can send you the name of all the colors if you wanted that specific rainbow look because they're all still available. Yay acrylic yarn. With that, we can move into works in progress. My Fates Thread Space Balls bag. I did not grab a sock blocker. Whoops. I have one finished sock. And I finally picked a name for these socks. These are my Christmas throwdown socks. The color is Pretty Twisted Yarns. Don't throw me down, Clark. I'm using two minis left over from Southern Skeins yarn. And it's a vanilla sock. So it's going well. Um, I am hoping to have these to wear on Christmas Day. We'll see. They do make me happy though because I have one of my little light bulb and jingle bell stitch markers on it. And I'm using my sock, sock koozie, ball sock, whatever you want to call these things. I'm really liking it. This, this whole center pool thing is awesome. So, I'm working on all of that. My foot has already fallen asleep. 10 minutes, that was quick. Miss Fiber Fox Grinch bag has my Southern Skeins Advent shawl in it. I have finished through day 19. So I don't think that's going to be a spoiler for anyone. If it is, then um, look away. Here it comes. Ooh. It's getting really, really big. My goodness. There's really not a very good way to show this. Oh, that's not bad. That, that, that's not too bad. The colors are amazing. The texture is amazing. 
This is designed by Meredith of A Lovely Blender Knits and it is the Winter Twigs Shawl. It's already out and available to purchase if you want to make one. It's going to be really, really big. Like, it's designed that way. I saw one of the testers and it was huge after they had blocked it. So I'm very excited and looking forward to that. I don't have a massive shawl. I have a few that are kind of smaller and easier to scrunch up around the neck. So I'm looking forward to seeing what I can do with this. I have day 20 ready to go and I just can't make myself sit down and do it. It's another thing of twisted rib and if you follow me on Instagram then you probably noticed I was always posting one day behind. Uh, that way hopefully I wouldn't spoil anything for anybody as far as colors go and around day 12 things fell apart. This is the this one right here is day 12. That's where I was last time I talked to y'all, last week. And I've come a long way. It, it took it took a lot of work to get here. And now I really want to finish my socks. So I don't know if I'm, I don't know how well this is going to go. Uh, this twisted rib section was taking me 30 minutes to make it across one row. Just one. Uh, I just finished up another section of twisted rib right here and it was taking me 45 minutes. Um, yeah. Yeah. I have another section of it to do and I did the math the other night. It's going to be, if it's 45 minutes a row, it'll be four and a half hours of work. So <laughs> that's a little intimidating, but it's going to be so pretty. I know it's, I know it's worth it. I know it's worth it. And it's the last one of those. After that, it's like seed and garter and stockinette and we're fine. <sighs> my goal has moved. My goal was to finish this within the 24 to 25 days. Um, I just want to finish it by New Year's now. Yeah, I think that's a more realistic goal. <laughs> I don't think it's going to get done by the 25th. Especially because I'm not going to be here on the 24th. We're going to go see my family for Christmas Eve. I would like to point out, I have some ends right here. But I have stopped and woven in. Yeah, we're going to go with that. Woven in all but these couple of days here. I'm staying on top of it. I'm working on it. I keep having to keep track of both needles because look at it. It's huge. I love it. I really do. It's so pretty. Okay. 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 Uh, what else? That is the only two projects I'm working on right now. Um, yeah, it feels really weird to only be working on two projects, but I finished all of my work orders. They all went out. Uh, it was a huge relief when that, that, that it was done and over with. Um, I can just kind of enjoy the rest of my year. Try to anyways. Um, I have three shipping notifications sitting in my email right now. So mail is coming, but the only mail I've received this week is my Southern, uh, Southern Skeins t-shirt subscription, which I did a separate video for if y'all want to go check that out. It was a really cute shirt as always. And yeah, that's it for all the yarny stuff. 15 minutes. I knew it was going to be a short episode this week. It is getting cold here right now. Chatter. We're going to talk chatter now. It is getting cold. There is literally cold wind blowing in as I'm recording. The temperature has been steadily dropping all afternoon. I'm wearing my sweaters. I am loving them. Uh, I have this one and then I have two uh, tin can knit flax sweaters that I've been wearing, which you will probably see come January because I've kind of been living in it. It is so big and oversized and just comfy. 
um, but yeah, so I think I'm going to get to wear this on Christmas Eve when I go to see my family. Uh, yeah, yeah. My grandma is excited. She wants to see this. Uh, she saw me working on part of it. I can't remember where I was. I must have been in the body because I was just knitting and talking to her. So she saw me working on a part of it and she she just couldn't understand how I make garments. <laughs> so she's excited to see it. Uh, yeah. Knitwear. If y'all want to see some amazing knitwear, my dad recommended a movie to me because he thought it was cute and that I would enjoy it. Uh, Christmas at Mistletoe Farms. It was cute. I did enjoy it. Enjoy it. Bino was hands down best character of the whole movie. But the knitwear in that movie, all the kids wear the best knitwear. They have a knitting community and everybody wears hand knit sweaters, hand knit hats. Oh, I love it. It was beautiful, inspiring. Y'all need to go and watch that. Um, yeah, otherwise it's been fairly quiet around here. I'm hoping to get into the kitchen tonight and make Oreo balls. I'll put a recipe down below for you. Um, it's, you know, Oreos, cream cheese, and then you dump them in almond bark, white almond bark. Oh, so good. I store mine in the refrigerator and they're just so good and cold. Mm -hmm. I missed out on them last year. I'm getting them this year. I'm making them. Mm. Oh, I'm excited for that. I'm just a little fat kid. Uh, I figured I would share my tree with y'all. Uh, I didn't really share a whole lot of Christmas or decorations or any of that kind of stuff. I've been really busy this month, but I thought I would share my tree with y'all. I've had a few comments about it spins. It does. We bought it that way. That, that is a feature of the tree. We didn't do anything. It, it's nothing extra um, that we bought and attached to a regular tree. That This is how the tree is made. It spins. <laughs> um, I can't say that I get super excited over too many things at Christmas. The tree I get really excited for. Um, my husband and I set up the tree together every year and it kind of just became a tradition by accident. So I used to have this really sad looking tree from Fred's. It was like 20 bucks and you could see through the whole tree, not just spots, like the whole thing. It was one step above Charlie Brown's tree. It was so sad. I was in college. It was fine. Well, got out of college, got married, still had this sad tree. My husband's like, you know, we could get a nicer tree. And the thought had never crossed my mind. We were on our way from Mississippi to my parents in central Louisiana. And it was late. It was Christmas Eve. It was like eight o'clock at night. The gas stations are closed. Everybody's closed. And we're going through this little tiny town and we see a light. And we're like, oh my God, go to the light. It was a Kmart. First off, I didn't know Kmart still existed. They had a Kmart and it was open. Eight o'clock Christmas Eve, Kmart was open. Hallelujah, we have a bathroom. <laughs> Came out of the bathrooms and realized that that's where all their trees are displayed. And this one is spinning. So we bought a tree on Christmas Eve and it was half price because it's Christmas Eve. Yeah, we roll up to my parents' house with all of our presents, two cats, because yes, we're the crazy people that travel with cats and a Christmas tree. My dad, you didn't think we would have a Christmas tree? <laughs> So we didn't even open this tree until the following year. And it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, I love it. We always have it changing colors like this because that's what makes us happy. It's always spinning. Ugh. 
like I said, we always wait and decorate it or set it up and decorate it together every year. And we accidentally started a tradition where we buy one ornament every year. Just one. We have to pick carefully and buy one ornament that is something special that happened that year. This year we actually picked one up back on our summer vacation in Santa Fe. I found a little brown pottery ornament that just looked like Santa Fe. And so we bought that and that's how we're going to remember 22. Um, there's a little toy truck somewhere. I'll do a tour and I'll, I'll show them to you. But you know, we bought a truck. So we have a toy truck and we bought a house. So there's a house key on here somewhere. Fun things like that. Um, we have two first Christmases. Oh, here comes Pepper Ann. This is artwork that she made for me this year. I'll get a zoom in of it for y'all. It's so cute though. It's got her little paw prints and up higher I have one from last year from her. So apparently every year I'm going to get two ornaments now. Uh, one that we pick and then one that Pepper makes us because <laughs> she goes to daycare and they do cute things like that. But I think I've rambled enough. Yeah, I've rambled enough. We're going to open today's advent because it's nine o'clock at night and I still haven't done that yet. And I'll show you a close up of some of our ornaments from every year. Day 22 is Comet. Let's see. Oh my God. This might be my favorite. Oh, purple is my favorite color. Gray is like my second favorite color. Oh, ooh, oh, oh, that is gonna look so good right behind each other. <gasps> I'm so excited. And yeah, I will probably not be here next week. It was really difficult for me to pry myself away from my husband and his wonderful company today. So I don't know if I can do it again next week. I don't know. In case I can't, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. I wish y'all all the best for this last week and all the best for next year. Bye.